welcome to lesson 64. Now the title for the next few pieces is going to be taking it to the course. But before we go out on the golf course, later in these sessions, I want to talk about preparing and getting ready for the course. Now when a pupil comes the first time, one of my sort of key questions is, why are you coming for a lesson and what can I do for you that you think will make you improve? And the most common answer from raw novice to tournament pro is they want consistency. And even the great Tiger Woods or Jordan Spieth, we can see inconsistency. They can shoot 66, followed by 74. So in their world, 74 is a great score for us, but when they can shoot a 66, it's inconsistent for them. But one of the things that people believe is that their swing is inconsistent. Even if I had a relative novice of 24 handicap who'd been playing for a year or so, you'd be surprised how consistent the mechanical movement is. Why do I say that? Well, let's just imagine I took a 26 handicap for the first tee of the Marcus course on the Dukes. And I said to, to say, Tom, Tom, you can hit as many shots as you want and we'll pick the one that you time sweetly. Now that might have taken three or 10 shots, but if we cherry pick the one that he timed, the ball will probably go pretty near to the target fairway or semi-rough. So we then go down there to play our second shot and I'd say the same, Tom, you can hit as many shots as you want to hit until you time one. And when they time it, you'll probably find that shot is quite effective. So they may have missed the green. You get down there, they've got a little chip over a bunker, they'd normally thin it in the bunker or, or fat it, but you give them lots of chance, okay, come on, until you time one sweetly, we'll cherry pick that one. Now, I reckon pretty much the highest handicapper, if he was allowed to cherry pick his time shots, would hit most par fours in three shots. And if he takes two putts and walks, then that's great. So, my belief is that all golfers that come to me are pretty consistent uh, creatures of habit. They may have uh, a good swing habit or they may have a bad swing habit. But what they do in terms of that habit is quite consistent. It's their timing that is the weakness. So let's just talk about timing the ball. Uh, I've got uh, my eight iron here. And what's good practice, just when you're loosening up, is to hit small shots. When you see a tournament pro warm up, he doesn't get the driver of the five and out, he too gets out the wedge, he finds a nice place. So whatever your swing is, you want to warm up and having gone through your preparation, the first key is to turn the shoulder, okay? So I'll turn my shoulder and then I'll hit the shot. I'll turn like a half a swing and I'll spin the ball away, okay? So there's no pressure here. I've got lots of opportunity. I've got lots more golf balls. So how am I going to improve my consistency? Well, the doorway to consistency is consistent pre-shot routine. My favorite pre-shot routine story is Peter Oosterhaus. He played with Jack Nicholas, and as he came off the golf course, Jack said to him, Peter, I've never played with a player of your standard who takes 15 seconds over some shots and a whole minute on others. He said, just pick a number, standardize it, make it consistent. And a month later, Oosterhaus won the Canadian Open, which was called the fifth major at the time. Had he changed his swing? No. But he'd picked a number, made his pre-shot routine 25 seconds, so that every shot he hit had the same time span. So, consistency of preparation leads to consistency of movement. But even if you get that right, you can still mistime it. So, I go through my routine, I get comfortable, I'm warming up. I'm looking to turn my left shoulder steadily and fire the ball with my hands. Because when I go out to the golf course, those are the three things I need to do on every shot. Prepare, load the shoulder, release the hands and find the ball sweetly. If you're going to invest half a day of your life in a round of golf, it's crazy to go at the first tee without having hit 30 or 40 warm-up shots. And if you can't do that because of time pressure, then swing a couple of clubs together and get the body moving. But don't think that you can get consistent timing from the first shot on the first tee. It's not going to happen. So try and warm up before you play. When you go out onto the golf course, you've done your homework, hopefully. You've, done, you've been working on your game. But whatever your swing model, you're going to have to have three, three basics. You're going to have to have preparation that's consistent. You need a shoulder turn that is consistent and you need a hand action that is consistent. 
So when you're on the golf course, you're in playing mode. When you're on the practice ground, it's rather like taking a car into the garage and working on the gearbox or the clutch. We major on one certain area of the car, we repair it and we put it back together. But then you go out on the road and you drive as normal. So you've got to have a practice ground mentality and a playing mentality. So, when you see a tournament pro warm, uh, warm up before a tournament round, it's normally half an hour, 40 minutes. It is just that, it's a warm up. Then they go out and play. It's when they come back in from play, they then go back to the practice ground to practice the things that manifested on the golf course. So it's important, if that's true for a tournament pro, how much more important for the weekend warrior? Of course it's important, but you've got to understand the difference between thinking about your swing on the practice ground and actually playing golf on the golf course. I had an exhibition match with the great Welsh Ryder Cup captain Brian Huggett and somebody asked him a question, uh, do you work on your swing? He said, well I'm 50 years of age, he said, I've had this swing for about 35 years, I know how it works. The key thing is to make sure that it's warmed up and ready to go. So if that's true for a tournament pro, it's true for us. Okay, so just to clarify, the pre-shot routine is a mental process. You offer the club, you build the grip, you post it in your stance. That's the first stage. You create power through your shoulder turn. That's the second phase. And then you release that power through the hands. Now you can see in here from the strike that that was a good shot. So I haven't tried to be accurate. I haven't tried to do different things in my swing. I've just determined to set up nicely, create power and release. And I'm going to take those three pedals to the first tee of the golf course.